Welcome to our morning service. We've had a great morning already. Join in singing our theme chorus, would you? Sound the battle cry. Hurrahs and soldiers rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna. Christ is captain of a mighty cross. Glad to have you here. We had a great service, early service this morning, the decisions, had a wonderful Sunday school. We're glad to have you. The backdrop here is for Bible school for this week. If you're wondering about that, where that came from, that's, that's a, a spaceship. That's what that is. Boy, if you, if you want to see something you, out there in the gym, man alive, that gym is something else, the way they have that set up there. They actually have a laser tag one, probably a quarter of the gym is taken up with laser tag, and they actually have, I mean, they bought these laser tag guns, and I was looking for some of the staff, and I found them out there, you know. Uh, but uh, it's going to be great for Bible school. Bible school, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 7 to 9. Each night, you're invited to come. You're going to have a great time. Pastor Dan will be back with his Gospel Illusions this year preaching again and so we're looking forward to that everybody's excited i'm excited i man he does a great job and he weaves the gospel in there and preaches and and so we're excited about that but uh then uh, the costumes i'm excited to see how people are going to look you know and uh we're gonna have a great time of bible school so i hope that you're planning to come and bring someone with you to bible school we're praying for souls to be saved we had 42 saved last year we had in years past, we've had uh, many more saved than even that. We've had, uh, I think, Pastor Dad, didn't we have 100 saved one time? Yeah. We had 104 saved one year in Bible school. It'd be wonder, wonderful to have a banner year like that again, amen? And so uh, I hope that you're praying and you're working, and this is a great way to get people to come uh, to, to church and to hear the gospel because we're going to simply be giving the gospel every single night. But we're, only, we're glad to have you here today. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you will bless in the service today. Thank you for the early service that we had this morning and the attendance there. Thank you for the Sunday school. Now for the second service, Father, we pray that you will bless in a wonderful way. If there's someone that needs Christ as their Savior, save them today. Dear Lord, I pray that uh, you'll just work in our hearts. Help us, Father, to be completely committed to serve you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
198 in your hymnal, Dwelling in Beulah Land, 198. Let's stand together as we join in singing together. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of earth beset on every hand. Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling. None of these shall move me from you. Bountiful supply for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Far below the storm of doubt upon the world is beating. Sons of men in battle long the enemy withstand. Save am I within the castle of God's word. that can reach me his Beulah land I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry oh yes I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply for I am those songs that we can all become a choir so we're going to sing that last verse we get to the chorus i'm living on the mountain i want you to be real quiet i'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky and then we're gonna just shout praise god amen and then we'll finish the song join me please a viewing here the works of god i sink in contemplation Hearing now his blessed voice, I see the way he planned. Dwelling in the spirit here, I learn the full salvation. Gladly will I tarry in Beulah land. Shh, I'm living on the mountain. Underneath the cloudless, praise God, I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Greet those about you as the instruments play.
232, 232 in your hymnal. Join me in the first and last verses. Far dearer than all that the world can impart was a message that came to my heart. How that Jesus alone for my sin did atone and Calvary covers it all. Calvary covers it all. My past with its sin can stand. My guilt and despair, Jesus took on him there. And Calvary covers it. soul by him bought shall be his in the glory on high where with gladness and song I'll be one on the throng and Calvary covers it all Calvary covers it all my past says it all. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our usher's going to come to receive the offering. Before they do, I want to remind you about some of our uh, missionary letters that I've received. And uh, Louise Chaplin, her son, will be coming here uh, in a couple of months, and we'll be glad to see him. We've never met him, but... Uh, we supported the chaplains for many years, and Brother Chaplin passed away. And so we've continued to support them. The money's going to help that mission there because uh, they have the churches that they've started, and so it's continuing to help them. Uh, but she wrote in this letter that uh, they went to Suriname 53 years ago. And when they went there, there was nothing there. There was nothing there. They put up a wood frame, 24 by 23 uh, foot house built it on supports and they began to uh, reach the people they said the people didn't want them there they didn't care about them but they just continued to preach the gospel and today they have a full church and the people are uh, standing outside to get in and that's great it's a great testimony unto the chaplains and praise the Lord for their ministry there then Brother uh, Jeremy Rowland with Baptist Church Planning Ministry, he's executive director of that, grew up in our church, was saved here and married here and, and, and served the Lord here. They're celebrating their 25th anniversary with Baptist Church Planning Ministry. So far, they've, char they've started 168 churches here, 53, and 53 churches in foreign countries, and so praise the Lord. We'll, he'll be here for our anniversary Sunday in a couple of weeks, be the main speaker here along with Hope Children's Home, and we're looking forward, and we'll, we'll have a lot of other guests here with us. Guess who called, Guess who uh, wrote this week? Some of you will know uh, uh, Owen Beachy. Some of you remember Owen Beachy. He's, his dear wife passed away last year, but he's coming down just for our anniversary Sunday, and so we're glad to pick him up. The thing I always remind, uh, reminded, uh, reminded about Owen Beachy, we had a softball team, back those days, and uh, we're going to have another softball team this year, but uh, he was pitching for us. He's a great pitcher. Dave, he's a great pitcher. He's pitching that ball, and I was playing second base. He pitched that ball. It was a, just a beautiful pitch, and the guy hit that ball, hit a line shot, hit him right in the forehead. Knocked him flat. I mean, just the way he was standing, he fell right on the ground. I thought, oh, my soul, he's dead. <laughs> it just smacked him. It hit him so hard. 
I thought it knocked the brains right out, out the back of his head, you know. I ran over there, and he's just laying there, you know, just straight up like that. I said, you alive, brother? <laughs> and we got him up, and but I thought, oh, my, his brains are going to be scrambled from that hit because it, it's so close, you know. But uh, praise the Lord, he went on. and uh, But he's coming by to see us, and uh, hopefully we'll have some other friends come that haven't been here in a while, and so we're glad to see him. Then uh, the Stephen, Stephen and Bonnie Burke, they're in our, our missionaries in Malaysia and Southeast, Af uh, Southeast Asia. They, they're praising the Lord for a teenager that came back to church. They, they got youth camp coming up. They got VBS. And so uh, praise the Lord for those folks there and the jo job they're doing. Then I told you last week to pray for the McLeans, our missionaries to New Zealand. Uh, they, she did go in for tests, and she does have cancer. She has chronic lung Chronic leukemia, CLL, and then small lymphonic lymphoma, lymphoma uh, SLL. And so they're going to start treating her right there in New Zealand. Pray for her. her their daughter is going to move there to be with them to help take care of her while she's going through the chemo. And uh, so pray for those dear folks. This is a letter that came uh, to us on Sunday, uh, Sunday night. Someone I guess they were watching our service. Were they watching our service? I don't know if they were here in the service or they're watching our service. But anyway, this is a message that was sent to us. I've attended many churches in my 60-plus years from Maine to Florida. It is my belief that the life and vitality of a church can many times be measured by its services on Sunday night and during the week rather than just a head count on Sunday morning. I was very impressed with the turnout and spirit of this past Sunday evening service. Somebody is doing something right at this church, and God is blessing it. Well done, faithful servants. That was a letter that was sent to us. It could have been someone in the service. You know, I thought about that. That sounds like it was somebody that came to our service. We had a great service last uh, Sunday night. So praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray for our offerings. All I'm praying for the summer is that we'll reach our general budget for the summer and uh, it's always a difficult thing with so many families gone. But I hope that you'll pray that we'll reach our budget, our general budget for the sun summer. Ushers, why don't you come receive the offering today? And uh, we'll have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll bless this offering today. Help us to reach our, our general budget for the summer, dear Lord. Pray that, uh, that uh, what we have would be sufficient. Bless our people as they give. Help them be faithful in their giving. Father, bring our families back. We have so many families that have been gone. Uh, for summer vacation. Pray that you'll bring them back. Help us, Father, to be faithful to you. Blessing this offering today in Jesus' name. Amen.
32 in your hymnal, God leads us along. Remain seated. We'll sing the first and last verses. 432. In shady green pasture, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along where the wild
darkness. There is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus. There is no moment. There is no distance. There is no heartbreak. He can take you through. So before you think that you're too lost to say. So before you think that you're too lost to say. Remember there is Amen. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, if you would, with me. Ephesians chapter 4 in your Bible. And we'll look down at verse number 7. We'll look at verses 7 through 16 of these, uh, this passage. Sounds like it's raining outside. Well, we're ready for the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Don't worry about that out there. I'll preach it long enough. I'll keep preaching until it stops raining. How about that? I finish this sermon, I'll preach tonight's sermon. And if I finish Wednesday, if I pre finish uh, tonight's sermon, then I'll preach Wednesday night's sermon. How about that? You get it all in one dose. I, I thought about doing that sometime, just preaching the whole week's sermons, you know, one time. Yeah, I could do that. I could. I could do that. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse number 7. If you can stand with me, go ahead and stand. We're going to begin with verse number 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Notice that gifts again. Now that he ascended, what is it? but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. He's talking about the third heaven. That he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, talking about Christ as the head of the church, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Christ gives us gifts in order that we might do the work of the church, in order that we might carry out the work of the church. Christ gives us gifts that we might carry out the work of the church. That's the theme of this passage that we're looking at. Christ gives us gifts in order to carry out the work of the church. And so I want to speak to you about that today. That's what this passage is all about. Let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless the preaching of the Word of God today. I pray that we would be awakened to the gift that you have given to us, that we might serve here in your church. We might be faithful at it. Help us to strive to do our very best for you. Now, dear Lord, I pray that you would save the lost here today. And I pray, Father, that uh, those who are away from you, uh, that are backslidden, that you would draw them back. They might be faithful to you once again. Help us to serve you. Bless in this message today, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor and his wife went to 
visit a farmer and have dinner with a farmer and his family. The farmer knew that the pastor loved southern fried chicken. And so he, he and his wife prepared a chicken dinner. Southern fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, corn on the cob, green beans, apple pie, alamode. And uh, he knew that the preacher loved chicken. And so they ate. And I'm telling you, that preacher, he really loved chicken. He almost ate that entire chicken by himself. After the preacher finished eating that uh, chicken dinner, he leaned back in his chair, he looked out the window, and he saw an old rooster out there running across the barnyard. And he said, my, that's a fine, proud rooster that you have out there in your barnyard. The farmer said, he ought to be. His son just entered the ministry. Did you get the gist of that? Being a pastor is a gift. Being a pastor is a gift. It's one of the gifts that's mentioned here in this passage and in other passages of the Word of God. God has given each one of us a gift to be used in His church. You have a gift to be used in this church. If you are a child of God, you have a gift to be used in this church. Now we learn from verse number 4, the church is a body. This is one body. This is the body of Christ. We are one body. We are unified as a body. The, we learn that by the Holy Spirit we're unified. Amen. We can be unified as the body here at Liberty Baptist Church. We are one body. We can be unified by the Spirit of God. That's why we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. So that we can be unified. So we're unified. But here in this passage it talks about us being there being a diversity in the church so the church is a unity but it's also a diversity what's it speaking of a diversity there are many different gifts in this church god has given us different gifts to be used in this church so there's a diversity of gifts amen we are one body we're unified by the spirit of god but also we have uh, a diversity here in the different gifts in this body we're all members of this body and we all have different gifts to be used in this church and that's what paul is talking about here to the church at ephesus he said listen everyone here in this church you're one body but you're diversified in that each one of you have a different gift to be used in this church and everyone needs to be using their gift in the church that's how the church continues to go on if we want this church to go on, we all need to use the gifts that God has given to us in this church to build this church. We build the church by the gifts that God has given to us. And everyone here has a gift to be used in this church. And so that's what he's talking about. Christ gives us gifts to carry out the work of the church. Christ gives us gifts to carry out the work of the church. And so we need to uh, look at this today. We're going to look, first of all, notice the gifts in verse number 7. Notice the gifts. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every believer is given a gift in this church to be used in this church. Notice he says, the gift of Christ. Every one of us have been given a gift to be used in this church to carry out the work of of the Lord it is a spiritual gift some people uh, differentiate between talents and uh, natural ability but you know I think that sometimes God uses that natural ability I think that God sometimes uses those talents so I don't differentiate between that I know there are some people that said well God gives you a complete different gift and that could be so but I believe also that God would use those natural talents and those uh, 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 you know, natural abilities that we have, I believe that God can use those uh, and uh, use those as a gift to be used here in the local church. Notice also, not only does He give each one of us a gift to be used in the local church, but He gives us grace in order to be able to do use that gift that God has given to us. Uh, he talks about it right there. He says, gr given grace according to the measure of of the gift is what he says so he gives us grace what is grace grace is power 
to be able to utilize that gift. It would not make sense for God to give us a gift and then not give us the power to be able to use that gift. Amen. God gives us not only a gift to be used in his church, and I'm talking to everyone here. I'm talking to every single person that's saved here today. God is giving you a gift to be used in this church. And then he gives you grace to be able to use that gift. I use myself as an example. Uh, when I was a, a boy growing up, I was very shy. I was very bashful. I did not want to speak to other people, you know. Uh, but God called me when I was in junior high camp up in Michigan. I went forward in a meeting. Uh, a missionary was preaching. And I went forward in that meeting, knelt there at the altar and gave my life to the Lord. And God called me. I tell you right then, God called me to be a preacher. <laughs> You say, how did you know that? When I got up, I just knew that God had called me to be a pastor. And uh, it was that quick. I got up, and I thought, God has called me to be a pastor. I'm going to be a pastor. And uh, as, as quick as that. Now, I was still bashful, and I was still shy. And uh, I didn't know how in the world God would ever do that with me. <laughs> I never volunteered for anything. I mean, when they had speaking parts in the church, I never volunteered. I would sit on my hands. My ear would always itch, but I would never itch it, you know. I was afraid they'd call on me. I just would not. I would not speak in front of anyone. I was very bashful, very shy. I liked being that way. I liked being by myself. I liked doing stuff by myself. I could do that. And, you know, even today, I could study for hours. I can go, and I've got a workshop out behind my house. I've built much of the furniture in our house, uh, a lot of the furniture in our house, and, and woodworking. I could go out there for hours, shut the door, and stay in there by myself. I could do that. I'm still basically shy within myself. I am. You know, I, I could be shy. I can be by myself. I could do that. But God called me to be a pastor. And you know what? God empowered me to be able to speak. I am here. I've been in the ministry for 46 years. Been preaching the Word of God for 46 years now. 40 years here at this church. Six years as assistant pastor. God did that. I am telling you, I know you look at me and you say, how in the world could you do that? God did it. God empowered me. God gave me the gift to preach. God empowered. Uh, gave me grace to be able to do it. It's only by the grace of God that I could stand here before you today and preach the word of God. It's only by the grace of God. I'm telling you that. If it's in my own power and in my own flesh, I would not be able to do that. But God did that. And God can do that for all of us. God gives us a gift. God empowers us to be able to carry that gift out. Amen? And that's what he's talking about here. People say this. I have people say this. I don't... I don't have a gift. I'm telling you, you have a gift because he said it right there in the Word of God. If you're saved, you've got a gift. People say, well, I don't know what the gift is. You know what? God's not trying to hide it from you. <laughs> God wants you to know what that is. You have, to, you have to say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do and be willing to do it. Amen? You've got to be willing to do it. There could be some Sunday school teachers here. There could be some Awana workers here. You know what? You'll never know unless you uh, say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. There could be some people singing, they could sing in that choir here. There could be some people that play in the, uh, the, with their instrument over there. There could be some ushers in here, some security guys. Uh, you know what? You have to say, I'm willing to do what God wants me to do. That's how you're going to find out. Amen? But you've got to be willing to do that. God has given us all gifts. Look what the Bible says. By the way, we are one body. Amen? We are one body with many members, just like your body. Think about this. Your body is one body, but it has many members. Your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears. Now, what is it like if you don't use part of your body? Then the rest of the body suffers, amen? That's the way it is with the church. If you don't use the gift that God has given to you, the rest of the body suffers. When you don't use the gift that God has given to you. You have a gift, you need to use that gift. The rest of the body suffers. Over in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8, look what it says there. It says exactly what I'm saying here. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us. So 
we're one body, but we have many different gifts, amen? And those gifts are to be used in this local church uh, to, uh, to support the church and to build the church. So everyone has a gift to be used in this church. We should use that gift. Now, we have different gifts. You may not have the gift that you want, but God has given you a gift. Don't be discouraged if you don't get the gift of preaching or you don't get the gift of teaching. You know, you ought to be thankful for whatever gift God has given to you. Because even the small gifts are important unto God. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 22, the Bible says, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. So that gift that you have, you say, well, this is not much. You know what? Every gift is important. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Every gift is important. Your gift is just as important as mine. You know, it's important. We have a nursery workers out there. They're working out there today in the nursery. Their gift is just as important as mine. Amen? <laughs> because if, if they weren't out there working, we'd have a, a, maybe a bunch of crying babies in here today, and you wouldn't be able to hear what in the world I'm saying. Their gift is important. The ushers, the security guards. Back in the audio center, these guys are broadcasting this today. They're running this, the... The sound system and all of those things. You know, that's important. All those jobs are important. They have a gift. They meant to use it. It's a gift of helps. That's a gift of helps. We're going to talk about those in a little bit later on. But every gift is important. You need to use that gift. Sometimes people say, oh, it's not much. It is much. It is something. It is important. Up in Canada a few years ago, they had a terrible crash up there. There was a commuter train hit a bus. A bus was stopped on the tracks, and the commuter train hit that bus and T-boned it, killed nine people. Many others uh, were injured. After the accident, they began to investigate it to find out what in the world happened. Something happened for that bus to be stuck on the tracks. So you know what they found out? They found out there was a little tiny screw on the bottom of that bus. A little, I'm talking about a little tiny screw. And it was screwed into this box on the bottom of the bus. And that screw had fallen out. When the screw fell out, the, the top fell off, and there were wires that came down and were dangling down. And when that bus went over those tracks, those wires hit the track, and shorted out, causing the door to the bus to open up. When the bus door opened up, my friend, the bus would not move forward. That's a safety feature on that bus. And so it would not move. The bus was stuck on the track. The train hit the bus and killed nine people. Many others were injured. And you know why? It was all because of a little tiny screw. That screw is important. Just as you are important, amen? Whatever uh, gift God has given to you is important. And if you don't use that gift that God has given to you, then the whole church suffers. Just like that little screw caused nine people to lose their life. You need to use the gift that God has given to you. And God has given everyone here a gift to be used. As much as God has given me a gift, God gave me this gift to be able to pastor I do have a pastor's heart. I don't care to do anything else. I have a pastor's heart. I have pastors. I have people tell me all the time, boy, you're a pastor. You know, that's what God called me to be. Didn't call me to be anything else. That's what I am. I care about you. I can tell you everybody's not here this morning. That's because I got a pastor's heart. I can tell you every single person is not here today. Some of them I can tell you where they're at. I have a pastor's heart. God called me to be a pastor. God's called you to be something. Christ gives us gifts in order to carry out the work of the church. You understand that? Christ gives us gifts in order to carry out the work of the church. How is this work being accomplished? How is this work being done? It's being done because God has given gifts to people to carry out the work of the church. Amen? Everyone here. This work will not go on unless everyone uses their gift that God has given to them. Number two, the giver. Oh, this is a tremendous passage. Look at verses 8 through 10. Wherefore, 
he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He's talking about the one that gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. So Paul is speaking of the, speaking of the giver of the gifts. Look, he says, he gave gifts unto men. Who is this? So Paul explains who this is that gave gifts unto us. Christ is the founder of the church. He's the foundation of the church. He's the builder of the church. Christ is the one that's given us gifts, is what he's talking about there. And he talks about, notice what he, he's quoting. Uh, he's actually quoting from the Old Testament here. He's quoting a prophetic, prophetic passage of Scripture from Psalm chapter 68 and verse number 18. Notice in Psalm 68, 18, this is what it says. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. So he's quoting, he said, he that ascended up, he led captivity captive. You say, what is he talking about? You ready? This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the time that Jesus Christ, from the time that Jesus Christ died and when he resurrected. That time period between Christ's death and his resurrection, Jesus Christ literally went down to the pits of hell. Hell was divided into two compartments called Hades hell, divided into two compartments, paradise and hell. Jesus, during his death and his resurrection, went down and he depopulated paradise. Paradise, where the Old Testament saints were. He depopulated, he took them out. And what did he do with them? He took them, he ascended to heaven, took them to the highest heaven, amen? The highest heaven, you know what that's talking about? The third heaven, amen? That's where the throne of God is located. Isn't there a lot of theology right there? There's a lot of good theology right there. I could spend time just talking about that passage today, but I, I have to move along. But isn't that great? But Paul says this. It's Christ, the same Christ that descended, ascended. He is the one that has given us gifts. And then he says it again. He, then he says it again. The same one that descended, ascended. He says it twice there. He doesn't want anyone to mistake. It wasn't, it was Christ. Amen. Christ, the same one that ascended and descended, that same one is Jesus Christ. He's the one that gave you the gifts. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. He's making it plain. He said, He is the one that gave you the gifts to be used in the church. Someone said this. Someone said this about Christ, about this, uh, about this passage of scripture. Uh, he, he ascended. Jesus is the only man that uh, descended farther than any man has ever gone to ascend higher than any man has ever gone. Amen? Tremendous passage of Scripture. He is the one that has given us the gifts. We ought to be felt so privileged that Christ did that for us. There's an old story that took place many years ago about a man that was looking in this display window. And in this display window, he, there was a picture of Christ dying on the cross. This man is staring at that picture, just staring at that picture of Christ dying on the cross. He's just staring at it. He didn't know what it meant. And a little, a little boy came up, a little street urgent, came up and looked up at the man. And the man looked down at the boy and said, Do you know what this means? And the little boy said, Sure. He said, you see that man hanging on the cross? That's Jesus up there. <laughs> That's Jesus hanging on the cross. And he said, you see those uh, soldiers? Those are the ones that killed Jesus. You see that lady standing over there? That's Mary, Jesus' mother. Jesus died there on the cross. The man said, okay, thank you. And the man began to walk off, and the little boy went running after him. He said, wait a minute, sir. He said, I forgot to tell you. He rose again. <laughs> That's saying Jesus. Paul is saying he's the one. He describes Jesus and he said he's the one that has given us the gifts, amen, to be used in the church. I like it. A full explanation. He's the one that has given us the gifts to be used in the church. I like that. Full explanation. Christ gives us gifts to be used to be a to, in order to carry out the work of the church. The gifts 
the giver and the gifted. Look at, beginning uh, there in chapter 4, we're going to look at, beginning with verse number 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The gifted. He begins to talk about the gifts. Yeah, so we've been talking about we all have a gift. So he begins to talk about some of the gifts. He starts out here with apostles. The first gifts he talks about are the apostles and prophets. Understand this about this apostle. The word apostle means sent one. The word prophet means forth, uh, foreteller. Those gifts were given to lay the foundation of the church. The church's foundation has been laid. Those gifts are no longer necessary any longer. And so we don't have those gifts. In fact, you can go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Notice what it says and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He's the chief cornerstone of the church, but the church was, we, they used those uh, offices of the apostle and prophet, pro, apostles and prophets to help to build the church. We don't need those any longer. They're not in effect. So we don't have apostles and we don't have prophets. And by the way, no one can meet the qualifications to be an apostle or to be a prophet today. To be an apostle, you had to see Christ after the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse number 1, Paul said this, I am, uh, I, am I am not a, an apostle? Uh, am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? In that statement there, you had to see Christ. To be an apostle, you had to see Jesus Christ after his resurrection. I, I've had people come in here and say, you're an apostle. I said, I'm not an apostle. I had this guy come. He kept calling me an apostle, Apostle Jackson. I said, I'm not an apostle. I said, I, I didn't see Christ after the resurrection. I'm not an apostle. He said, oh, you're too, uh, you, you, too, you are an apostle. I said, I'm not an apostle. Sometimes you'll, you'll go by a church, some places, and you'll, they'll say apostle so-and-so. Listen, listen, there aren't any apostles any longer. You have to see Christ after the resurrection to be an apostle. So we have no apostles. That gift is no longer in effect. Then the gift of a, a prophet. That law, a gift is no longer in effect. To be a prophet, you have to be 100%. 100%. Not 99%, not 98%, but 100%. To be a true prophet of God, you have to have 100% effect. Amen? 100% truth every single time. So these people that call themselves prophets, they're not prophets. They're fake prophets. They're not prophets. To be a true prophet, you have to be 100%. The Bible tells us that uh, there in Deuteronomy chapter 18. It gives a description. I don't have time to read all these verses. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, it talks about it. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 and 20 through 22. One part of that says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if that thing follow not, nor, not, uh, nor come to pass, uh, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. So he says, It if it doesn't come to pass, then the Lord did not speak that. Amen? <laughs> That's 100%. So we don't have apostles. We don't have prophets. So those two gifts are no longer in effect. The, next, the second gift that he mentions there is evangelist. An evangelist, euangelion, uh, to preach the gospel is what that means. Is the Greek word euangelion, to preach the gospel. Uh, 
an evangelist is a missionary. We call him missionary evangelist. The word missionary is not found in the word of God, but the word evangelist is. So um, an evangelist was one who would preach the gospel, start churches, and strengthen churches. And so we use that term. I like to call them missionary evangelists so people understand exactly what they are, a missionary evangelist. Uh, but they, they start churches, they plant churches, and they strengthen churches. And so that's, uh, so that's what they are. So that gift is still in effect today. So there are some that are missionary, missionary evangelists, if you would. If God calls you to do that, then that's what you should do. Thirdly, there are pastors. He, he mentions pastor. The word pastor comes from the Greek word poimen, which means shepherd. So a pastor is a shepherd. When you say Pastor Jackson, you're calling me the shepherd. I'm the shepherd of the flock. You're the sheep. I'm the flock. I'm the, pa I'm the pastor. I'm the shepherd. There are two other titles given to a pastor, elder and bishop. The, the, the Greek words for both of those are very interesting. Elder, uh, the word elder comes from the Greek word presbyteros. And the word uh, bishop comes from the Greek word, uh, uh, my mind just went blank, uh, presbyteros, and um, I'll think of it in just a second. Uh, but what's interesting about that, those, uh, a bishop is a person that oversees. That word means to oversee. The word elder means, denotes a person with uh, godly wisdom. And so those are two titles that are given to the pastor. So when you say pastor, he's pastor, he's elder, he's bishop. Uh, and so it, oh, the, word for, the Greek word for bishop is episkopos. So you can think of the, doesn't that sound like a word that you, uh, a denomination that you think about, episkopos and presbyteros, those two terms? But nonetheless, those are titles that are given to the pastor, what the pastor is supposed to do. The main thing for a pastor to do is to feed the sheep. One of my main jobs is to feed the church of God. That's what I'm trying to do today. Trying to feed you. I'm trying to give you the truth of the word of God today. That's my job. To do that, look at John chapter 21 and verses 15 through 17. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. In fact, in that passage, he says it two more times. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep. That is my job, to feed the sheep, uh, to feed you teach you the word of God. I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. So uh, we have pastors. We have these gifts. Then there's one more gift that's mentioned there, and that is teacher. The next gift that's mentioned is teacher. By the way, notice that the pastor and the teacher are joined together there. In other words, to be a pastor, you also should be a teacher. Amen. But that also says that they're the gift of teaching. So you can be a teacher. You have the gift of teaching. Some of you have the gift of teaching. You don't even know that you have the gift of teaching because you've never even tried. You need to try. You might have the gift of teaching. And, uh, and so you should use, you should exercise that gift of teaching. By the way, the word teacher, and I don't usually talk about these Greek words, but uh, sometimes I do just to help you to understand what it's talking about. Didaskalos is the word for teacher there. And that word, you know what it literally means? It means... <laughs> it, it's, it's talking about to inspire learning. So a person can think that they're a teacher, but they're not really teaching, you know, because they're not inspiring any learning. You have to inspire learning. A teacher inspires learning. You might have a person that calls himself a teacher, but they're not really a teacher unless they inspire learning. I'm trying to inspire you today. Am I inspiring you? What if he said no? <laughs> and I go, whoop. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you what I did once as an assistant pastor just to get the people to sing. I did something. I, I'm almost embarrassed to, that I did this. But that, when I was a youth pastor, when I was a young assistant pastor, you know, you just do crazy things. I'm not going to tell you what I did, but... Oh, come on. <laughs> no, 
you'll, you, you won't think good well of me if I tell you what I did. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, I'll regret this for the rest of my life. One time when I was assistant pastor, I was leading the music, trying to get these people to sing. I stood on my head. On the platform. I actually stood on my head on the platform. I'm embarrassed about that. I was trying to inspire the people. They really sang after that, let me tell you. I got a real serious talk from the pastor that week, too, let me tell you that. Very serious talk. <laughs> Called me in his office. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 28. I want you to turn there because it lists some other gifts there. And there are two gifts, particularly, that he mentions there that I believe many folks have. There are two gifts there. Verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 12, For to you, to one, is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Those are some gifts. Verse 28, And God has set some in the church, first, he mentions these uh, other gifts, first apostles, secondary, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after the miracles, then gifts of healings, we don't have that gift any longer. Uh, I believe that God heals, but uh, people don't have that gift. I believe God heals, amen. Helps, this is the one, these two right here, helps and governments. Diversities of tongues, we don't have that anymore. That passed away, the Bible said. But the gifts of helps and governments, the gift of helps, I think a lot of people have this gift. The gift of helps is helping out, being willing to help in the church, being willing to help. Hey, we need some volunteers. You know what? I'm going to do it. Just working in the church, helping do things. It took them hours to build all these things. I, uh, Brother Mike, I know you don't want me to say anything. He built this thing up here. He's going to be mad at me. He'll go out the front door because he won't shake my hand, but... <laughs> this is the only time I can pick on him so I'm going to pick on him when I can but you know what you know what that's a gift of help say man for somebody to do that then out there in the building out there in the gymnasium the people have been working all week on that you, you, you go out there and see that they have a laser tag uh, game set up out there a, a quarter of the gym they built plywood walls in there, stained them. They didn't just put the walls, they stained them. <laughs> then built, uh, took uh, tarps and put them all the way up to the ceiling in there just so the kids can go out there and play in Bible school laser tag. That's a lot of work. Then all the games set up. You go out there, all the games set up. That took a, you know what? That's the gift of helps, amen? The gift of helps. I believe a lot of people have been given that gift because there's a lot of help that needs to be in the church. But not only that, notice the gift of governments. You know what the gift of governments? That's not to run for office. That's to organize. That's to be an organizer. That's what it's talking about. God gives the gift of organization so people can organize things and run things, amen, in the church. I think those are great gifts. Sometimes we overlook those gifts. We look at the gift of teaching and all that. Uh, you know, those are... Teaching is a great gift. Those are great gifts. But sometimes God gives us those gifts. But all of us have a gift. Maybe it's the gift of helps. Maybe it's the gift of government. So organize things. Those are great gifts. Now, we go on. Many times we stop it right there. Many times we preach and we stop right there and we don't go any further. But if you go further, you know what you see in the next verses? In the next verses, you see why those gifts have been given. <laughs> So we need to really continue on, and I'm going to quickly go through the reasons. There's several reasons that we have here. Number one, look at verse number 12. They're all mentioned right here in the text that we're looking at, the context. Ephesians 4, 12, for the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen, the perfecting of the saints. The reason that God has given the gift of to being a pastor is to perfect the saints. You know what the word perfect means? It means to 
build, it, it means to uh, build up. It means to equip. To equip. As a, a pastor, God has given me that gift to perfect you or to equip you to do the work of the church. Are you with me? I'm not to do all the work of the church. My job is to equip you to do the work of the church. A lot of people think the pastor's job is to do everything. It's not so. The pastor's job is to equip you to do the job. We're to be training you to do the job. We're to be training you. We oversee it as a bishop, an overseer. Uh, we're to oversee that. But our job is to perfect you so that you can do the work of the church. You know what? I've done all the work in the church. I'm not afraid to do any work in the church. If I see something that needs to be done, I will do it. I've been working at this church. My wife has been working at this church for 40 years. We've been working here at this church. And we've done everything here in the church for 40 years. For many years, we did, all, we did everything for many years here at the church. When we started the church, my wife and myself and our two little babies, we did it. My wife was a teacher. She taught for 30 years. But you know what? My wife, when we started this church, she ran the nursery. She ran the junior church. She ran the children's Sunday school. She was the secretary of the church. She did all of those things. She did them for many years. It wasn't just the first year. I mean, for 10, 15, 20 years. She was the nurse. She was the head of our nursery for 15 or 20 years. I can't remember. It's, there was a transition in there. Someone said, well, let's let somebody else do that job. But she did it. She ran the junior church. For years and years, she ran the junior church. Bible school. You know, my wife used to get up here and tell a Bible story for Bible school. She would do it with, can you remember flannel graphs? <laughs> she used to do that. She used to do that for years and years. She did all of that. When we moved into this building, she still did all of that. This building... You know, the Lord, praise the Lord, my father was a builder. He came in here, and we built this building. This building right here, we're sitting in right here, we built this building. I worked in every part of this building. I dug the footers for this building. I helped to pour the foundation for this building. I laid the blocks, helped to lay the blocks for this building. Put the furry strips up. Put the petitions up. Uh, uh, help the plumber do the plumbing. We had one... Uh, one electrician in our church and he pulled all the wire but he would only let me help him how about, how about that Dan he wouldn't let anybody else help him pulled all the wire for this entire building my father and I who's in heaven with the Lord put all the windows in these are the same windows these are the windows put all the windows the window jams all the set all the doors my father and I all the the doors that are still stained and those guys are talking about painting those doors I told him the other day, I said, you know who stained all those doors? That was me. <laughs> Nobody wanted to help with that. It was a stinky job. <laughs> all the doors used to be that. I did that. I put the roof. I, uh, there was one carpenter and myself put all the trusses up in this building. One, one carpenter, myself, and a crane operator. We put, set all the trusses for this building. Then we decked the building out. Then we put the uh, shingles on the roof. I was there. I was doing the work. And uh, all the base cove, all the woodwork, I finished, I trimmed this entire building out myself, by myself. All the trim work on the baptism, I built all of that. I did all of that. So I'm, what I'm saying is, I know how to work. I'm not afraid to work. So don't say, well, he doesn't do anything. Listen, I'm trying to do my job as a pastor. I have to oversee the church. I have to do all of these other things. But my job is to train you to do the job. Amen? You're to do the work of the church. We're all to do the work of the church for the perfecting of the saints. Notice, secondly, look at verse number 13. For the unity of faith, he says, till we all come in the unity of the faith. What is it talking about? We need to teach you the truth. We need to teach you doctrine so that we're unified. Amen? We need to be unified. And that's by teaching the doctrine. I'm teaching you doctrine today. In order for us to be unified, we all need to be taught the same doctrine, don't we? And so we are. That's what the gifts are given for. Number three, the growth of God's children. In verse number 14, that henceforth 
be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Pastor's job is to grow the children of God, help you to be stable so that uh, when false teachers come up, and they're going to come up, and uh, then you will not be blown away by that. Amen? You need to know the truth. I'm showing you the Bible. You carry your Bible. That's what we say. That's what we're called Bible-believing Baptists. Amen? Because we carry the Bible. So we know the truth. Number four, verse number 15, the truth in love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into all, in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Let me tell you this. There are some churches and some preachers that preach the truth. The truth can be dry, it can be very hard. Then there are some churches and there are some preachers that just preach love. But the Bible says here, we're to preach the truth in love. Amen? <laughs> we're to preach the truth, but we're to do it in love. That's what the Bible says. You say, what's the difference between a lot of churches? Some preach the truth, some preach love, but my friend, we're to preach the truth in love. Amen? That's what the Bible says. That's why the gifts have been given. That's how we're to do it. Then number five, the body fitly joined together. Uh, that's what the gifts are given for. In other words, the body of Christ joined together, built up in love. We're to be fitly joined together. That's what the job, that's what the gifts are for, so that we'll be joined together to do the work of God. Amen? That's the way that we do the work of God. Everyone using their gifts. All of us join together using those gifts to do the work of God. That's why you have that gift. You need to use your gift. Everyone has a gift. Find out what that gift is. Say, God, what is that gift? Use that gift for God. Use that gift to help build His church. A pastor said to a lady, Would you pray about teaching a Sunday school class? We need a Sunday school teacher. And the lady said, Pastor, I don't want to be tied down. The pastor said, Jesus was willing to be nailed down for you. Don't you think you should be willing to be tied down for him? Think about it. Jesus was nailed down for you. Why can't we be tied down for Jesus? Be willing to serve Him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Christ gives us gifts in order to carry out the work of the church. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one looking around. Here's a question for you. Number one, you say, I don't know what gift God has for me today. I don't know. I don't know what gift God has given to me would you pray for me? I'd like to find out what that gift is so I can use it. Here's my hand. Slip your hand up all through the building. I don't know what the gift is God's given to me. But would you pray for me? Slip your hand up all through the building. All through the building. Thank you very much. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. I hope that you'll pray. Again, it could be the gift of helps. It could be the gift of uh, government. In other words, organization. It could be a teacher. There are different gifts. I'm not sure what it is, but God... Listen, God's not trying to hide it from you. <laughs> he wants you to know. Sometimes you have to be willing to say, you know what, I'm going to step out, and I'm going to see what it is the Lord has me, wants me to do. Some people are saying, I don't want to know, because <laughs> then I'll be obligated to do it. I, I'll be tied down. No, you need to be tied down. Jesus died for you. Jesus was nailed down for you. You ought to be willing to be tied down for Him. You ought to be willing to serve Him. Use that gift. Now, Today, you say, you know what? I'm going to use my gift in this local church. I'm going to use my gift to serve the Lord. I'm going to use my gift to serve the Lord. Would you pray for me today, preacher? I'm going to use my gift to serve the Lord. Would you pray for me? Slip your hands up all through the building. I'm going to use my gift to serve the Lord. Would you pray for me? Thank you very much. Just about every hand in this place. Amen. Hands are still going up. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 You may put your hands down. Thank you very much. I'm telling you, folks, you think that things just got this way? It, it, it's because people are using their gifts to do the work of God. That's how it's going to be accomplished. That's how it's going to be done. And I'm going to pray for you that you would use your gift 
You need to step in. You need to say, I'll, I'm willing to help. I will do that. I will help. I will do whatever it takes. I'm using, willing to use the gift that God has given to me. We didn't even talk. I didn't even talk about today that if we don't use those gifts, we're going to be held accountable for those gifts. And I, I think many times, and the Bible even says, that if we don't use that gift, we may lose it. Paul told Timothy to use, stir up the gift. He told him to stir it up, to use it. We need to stir it up. Some of you need to have a stirring. <laughs> Maybe stir it up, use the gift that God's given to you. In this local church, if we do that, we'll see more souls saved. We'll see God's work carried on. Now, one more question. Do you know for certain that you're saved? Do you know for certain that you're on your way to heaven? If you don't know that for certain, think... Just listen to me for a second. If you don't know for sure that you're saved and on your way to heaven, you know what? You need to know that. You can know that you're on your way to heaven. You can know that you have eternal life. Wouldn't you like to know that you have the eternal, eternal life? You can receive the gift of eternal life. Wouldn't you like to receive the gift of eternal life? Know that you have the gift of eternal life. Know 100% that you're on your way to heaven no matter what happens. Wouldn't you like to know that? If you'd like to know that, would you slip your hand up and put it back down? Say, I'd like to know 100% that I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to know 100% that I'm on my way to heaven. Would you pray for me? I'm going to have a word of prayer. And I'm going to invite you to come to the altar in just a moment. Some of you need to come and say, Lord, show me what gift you have for me. Or some of you, and you know what gift God has given to you. You need to come and say, Lord, help me to use that gift for you. Dear Lord, be with the invitation here today. Help us to use the gifts that you have given to us. There are some that raise their hands and said, I don't know what the gift is that God has given to me. But dear Lord, you reveal it to them. Show them. You're not trying to hide it from them. You just want them, Father, to use it. Help them to be willing to step out and use whatever gift you've given to them. Then, dear Lord, there are many that raised their hand and said, You know, I'm going to use my gift for the Lord. I pray, Father, that they would. I pray that they wouldn't hold back, but I pray that they would use the gift that you've given to them for your glory. Then, dear, dear Lord, there's some here that are not, they're not sure they're saved. I pray that you would save them. Help them to come when the invitation is given. Now, bless in this invitation time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke in your heart. We're going to sing an invitation hymn. Why don't you come right now? Jesus is tenderly calling you home, calling.